Hi, I'm Mike Stanton with Build America Mutual. I'm here with Les Richmond, BAM's pension actuary. Les is the author of a new white paper on current labor market conditions and how they're impacting pension risk for municipal issuers across the country. Thanks for being here today, Les. My pleasure. So you start by sec uh, citing some data that talks about turnover in the public sector workforce, how that's changed uh, since the onset of the COVID pandemic. What did you find? Well, there's plenty of survey data that indicates that uh, employees are re terminating employment in greater numbers. There's a lot of job openings, especially for hard to fill positions. And uh, employees are retiring in greater numbers and employees are accelerating their retirement sooner than they normally would. So you talk about the changes in the demographics of the, the public sector workforce as well as the retiree base. Um, demographics has a very specific definition in the world of pension actuaries. And can you walk us through what you're talking about there? Well, when we think about uh, demographic risk in the context of pension risk, which is the risk that uh, pension uh, costs can, and OPEB costs can grow to such a degree as to impair an issuer's ability to pay their debt, something we're very concerned about at BAM, um, we think about the, greater, uh, the portion of the pension plan population that's comprised of retirees. And uh, so uh, these demographic shifts that are taking place uh, are continuing or even exacerbating a trend that's been taking place over at least the past 20 years, which is that retirees are comprising a greater portion of the overall pension plan population. And when you have more retirees in a plan, how does that impact uh, what, what governments can do to manage their risks? Well, there are, there are at least three different ways that this is kind of a concerning trend. Uh, one is that um, is kind of a byproduct of uh, inadequate funding policies by, uh, by plan sponsors. A, a, plan, a, a, a sound funding policy should pay for a person's pension during the time they're an active employee. Uh, but that's in many cases not what is happening. So when you have a lot of uh, retirees as part of your plan population, the contribution has to cover not just current benefits for people uh, who, are, who are active employees, but also paying for retiree pensions that should have been paid for earlier. So you get very high uh, pension contributions and budget requirements uh, in accordance with that. Uh, secondly, um, pension plans in the public sector typically require employees to contribute out of their monthly or weekly paycheck. So uh, the less significant part of the population active employees are, the less significance that funding source is. And uh, last, um, if, if an employer wants to uh, decrease plan liabilities by doing a benefit reform, the hardest group to reform their benefits as current retirees. And so if, uh, if a reform is what is needed, the less effective it'll be, the greater portion of the population is comprised of retirees. So, you know, most of all, not all pensions are tied back to salary. So as salary changes, it's kind of obvious that the, the dynamics and the economics of the pension plan would change as well. It's more nuanced than that, though. You know, how is that impacting uh, the outlook for pension risks? Well, if, you know, in, the, in terms of uh, what's happening with the demographics, you would think that if uh, a plan sponsor, this just seems logical, is that um, if they want to attract and retain employees, um, they will possibly consider paying them more uh, or, or improving benefits in some way uh, to attract and retain them. So in terms of uh, wages, you know, an actuary, when they value the plan liabilities, they assume a certain wage increase uh, out into the future. When wages increase by more than that, it's going to increase the projected benefits under the plan and the liabilities and the budgetary requirements to pay for pensions. Um, with respect to uh, benefits, um, you know, if benefits are made more generous in some way, and we cite a few different examples in the paper, um, that's going to increase liabilities and, again, budgetary requirements. So that's going to have an impact on your pension risk. And as you cite in some cases, you know, the highly skilled workers in the public sector workforce are, are in some ways the, the real focus of this because it takes time to get a police officer trained and there's, there's some elements of experience just can't be replaced. Um, so, you know, retaining those workers is, is probably a higher priority in the public sector than maybe it is in the private sector. Um, so a challenge for uh, managers across the country. Oh, absolutely. Um, so from a municipal bond analyst's perspective, why is it worth it looking at these factors? I mean, many municipal bond analysts have been looking at pension risks now you know, for, for well over a decade. It's been part of the discussion in the marketplace. What's special about this moment? Well, you know, there's typically a time lag between 
when things happen and when they're reported uh, in financial reports. And so if an analyst would have this type of thing on their radar screen, such as uh, the plan sponsor is doing a salary review of all their positions and it's going to raise everyone's salary by uh, a significant amount. Um, if, if there's uh, city council meetings that are reporting on potential benefit reforms that are going to increase benefits, they will be to the attention of the credit analysts before they're ever reported in the financial report. So you get a leg up uh, in terms of this pension risk by, by paying attention to these types of details. And we appreciate that you're doing that for BAM. So thank you for your time, Les. Uh, thank you for writing this white paper. It's available on the BAM website. Thank you for watching. Uh, we'll be back with more Credit Insights in the future.